Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of John Schaefer's At The Gates. It is by Conifer Games and released today, January 23rd, 2019. So if you guys were fans of Civilization, this is from the brilliant mind that brought us, well, essentially, Civilization V. And now this is a different, new, interesting, very complex, very complicated, at least starting. There's a lot of information to process, a lot of things done differently than what maybe you're used to. But yeah, it's a 4X game along the lines of Civilization, but still very different. So that being said, there is a tremendous amount of information, as I just stated, and I feel like I could have continued to play through. I played through a little bit, and I have a rough idea what I'm doing. But I feel like I would not do justice to what we're supposed to be doing if I didn't play through the tutorial side of things. So the first three times you play the game, there are supposed to be specific map seeds that the game basically chooses for you. And it's kind of to direct you and help you learn and so on and so forth. I read that somewhere and that's a developer's choice. After that, it kind of breaks the thing wide open and you can choose all sorts of different things. The maps can be randomly generated. There's like 300 million maps or more, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be good, but we have a lot to learn. So let's hop in and try to learn. As you can see here, we only have the goths that we can play as. So we shall try and play as them. Now, keep in mind, I, like I said, I played a little bit, but there's a whole bunch I still do not understand. There's going to be lots of stuff that pop up with information, and then things from that point that you can hover over, and it'll give you even more information, and so on and so forth. And as you see stuff over here starting to scroll by, you can, of course, hover your mouse over and it'll stop it. Your growing fame has convinced Clan Radulf to leave the wilderness and join your tribe. They are afraid of water. And they are meek. Click the notification icon or press enter to learn more about them. Right click this notification to dismiss it. So if you hover over fame, as your fame grows, new clans hear of your deeds and join your tribe. With each clan that joins, fewer remain who are interested in your leadership. And the rate of new clans or the rate that new clans arrive will slow down considerably. You start the game producing four fame per turn. But this number can be increased dramatically by training clans and professions that produce fame, like the Bard, Feastmaster, and the Woodcarver. Declaring a kingdom provides a massive boost to fame, but fixes your settlement in place. It is an option that should be avoided during the first few years of the game. So from here, then we can go see, hey, what's up with clans? And then from clans, we can learn about fighting. And then from fighting, we can learn about units. And then from... So, so as you can see, there. It can get away from you. It can get a little bit crazy with all the information that's here. So, I mean, most of the stuff seems somewhat like you, you kind of understand. I'm not going to go into every single thing that pops up. But, yeah, like you can definitely, like professions, into, we'll say, upgrades, into techs, into discipline or level up into training into like I, I i like this i like this style of doing things but it can also be funny when you can do multiples off of it so to me that's enjoyable it's kind of neat this map seed does seem to be different than the last one i did play but i didn't get too far into it so we'll, we'll see all right so we have three different tribes that have joined us it is a turn-based game so i can take as much time as i want to explain stuff to you guys or try to learn about it so what i'm going to do is going to click on this and I'm going to do the welcome to at the gates. And we're going to basically just start and run through all the different things. So this is going to be heavy on explanation and things of that nature. May not show a lot of the gameplay. So bear with it for the first few episodes, guys and gals, till we get our, our feet you know, firmly planted on what we're doing. And then hopefully we'll be able to charge forward and be victorious and great and wonderful and all that stuff. So just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. So, welcome to At The Gates. Help tips will occasionally appear here to assist you with learning the game concepts. Yay, you can open the help. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Mouse over any word in yellow to learn more about it. That's funny. Move your cursor over any yellow text to learn more about the concept, even from inside other tooltips. It's tooltip exception. No! Sorry, I, like I said, I really enjoyed it. All right, At The Gates is a hard, slow game. Accomplishing things takes time, and although the early game is often difficult, you will eventually build a powerful kingdom. 
Click on the button on the next screen to continue learning more about the basics of ATG or at the gates. Want to go it alone? Feel free to skip these at any point. All right, I want to learn more about the basic game summary. I, I can't. It doesn't want. Yeah. I, we, yeah. Well, that that didn't work. All right. Well, we're we're gonna bring it up anyway. Why? Because I can, and because it's there. Okay. At the gates is a turn-based game, uh, similar to other 4x games like Civilization, for instance. The three biggest differences are you only ever own one city, which is your settlement, which is right here in the heart of good old Kentucky. No, uh, just right there in the middle of the map. It's fine. Uh, let's see. You'll spend more time managing resources and characters, or clans. And At the Gates is generally more unpredictable and roguelike than other 4X games. It's not necessarily considering itself a full roguelike game, but it has those elements and it's more than other ones. I would That's how I interpret that. We'll see. The last point is important. In one game, you might have a huge source of treasure nearby, while in another, you might be battling endless winter of the far north. Yeah. For your first couple of games, we made sure that the map is somewhere in between. So like I said, they, they kind of have an idea of where they want you to be so you can learn how to play. Now, again, keep in mind, guys and gals, I know this is going to upset people. Like, oh, we wanted to see gameplay. We don't want to hear you talk. I know. I, I hear that complaint all the time. But think of it this way. Say this is a game that you want to get, you want to play, and you go, hey, Bumpy's doing this thing. Uh, he's going through all kind of the information. I'm going to watch. I'm going to pay attention. And, oh, I kind of understand this. I understand it. When you decide you want to finally play the game, you can skip all this stuff and go right in and start playing it. This way, all the information's there. If I don't understand something, say I make a mistake and I don't quite get how this works, even if you haven't played the game and you understood what was said, or it's something I forgot, you can bring that up, mention it, and be like, oh, this is how you do that. So it's kind of like a win-win all around, except for the people who are, of course, nasty, mean people who hate me for doing tutorialized things. So, hi, hi, mean, nasty, hateful people. How's it going? Sorry. All right, anyway, what were we doing? All right, we were playing. Okay, so the map somewhere in between. Your ultimate goal is to build a kingdom powerful enough to topple the Roman Empire, either militarily or by more indirect means. You'll start each game by foraging for food before eventually settling down in one place and building more advanced and permanent structures from stone blocks. Alright, I'm curious about stone blocks. Stone blocks are created from stone by a block cutter. Makes sense. Stone blocks are a very important resource as they can be used to construct permanent structures which never degrade. They're also required by some profession upgrades. Okay. There are also other factions in the world who have already been on the map for a while. Some are immensely strong right at the start of the game, so be cautious, be careful. You're not directly competing with anyone in At The Gates, but that doesn't mean you can ignore your neighbors. The other leaders can have strong personalities and militaries, and if you upset someone, you might come to regret it. Personalities. Each leader has two personality traits which helps shape the diplomatic approaches and interactions they choose. Okay. Uh, let's see, interface, okay, what to do on the first turn, oh yeah, we're gonna have to continue to hop out, guys and gals, so like I said, I played through a little bit, and I wanted to try to skip this if I could, but as you can see, there is a tremendous amount going on, so what we're about to do here is we're gonna learn what to do on the first turn, once we learn what to do on the first turn, we're probably gonna take that first turn, and then we're gonna continue on, so be aware. Be aware, there, are, there is a plan, and we will see some of the gameplay and some of the stuff unfold before us. So just just, just hold tight, guys and gals. Hold tight. Alright, your first order of business is deciding which of your three clans to train in what profession. We suggest starting with an explorer. It's a good call. Next, you will need to choose a tech to begin studying. We suggest agriculture. Fair enough. These are decisions that you will be making often. This is all you need to do on the first turn, though the next turn you'll have a you'll have a, a shiny new unit ready to begin exploring or harvesting resources from the map. The most important task you need to address will always be displayed in the glowing button in the upper right corner of the world screen. It's right here. Remember that you can read these tips any time by going, yeah. Click to learn more. What to do on the first turn continued. Seriously. Seriously. Come on, man fine. Your high level goals in the first few turns of the game are revealing the map around you with an explorer in order to find abandoned ruins which often contain useful items and resources deposit you can harvest. 
training clans as foragers in order to harvest deposits you already know about. Uh, let's see. For the most part, you can use the map to guide your strategic decisions. Whatever resource deposits are available nearby should usually become the foundation of your economy. As even things you don't need can be traded for what you lack when a caravan is visiting. At the very least, you'll want a hunter, gatherer, or reaper soon, before the winter's chill takes hold. Click to learn more. Alright, so we're going to start with that. So we know what we need to do in our first turn. So we're going to start up our first turn here. And you can move around the map with W, A, S, and D. You can zoom in. Well, this is as far zoomed in as you can go. You can also zoom out. You can see the tactical map, which I think tab? No, it's not tab. What is the button? It's F11. Yeah, I'm not sure I like F11. I think I'll just scroll in and out with my mouse. Okay, so new clans have joined, and we need to choose a specific one of these three new clans um, to become, what was it, our explorer. We'd really appreciate a place to stay another night out in the rain, and we'll certainly lose our minds. You are meek and afraid of water. Well, that's not great. All right, so what is meek? Morale is halved, cannot be trained in social professions, never has desires, never engages in feuds with other clans. That's not all bad. And then afraid of water. Three turns needed to enter tiles with streams. Ugh. Two turns needed to enter marsh tiles. Training time for water-based professions doubled. That's not great. All right, we're going to go with the next clan. We have the Herrick. What are those sticks with metal shapes on the end that everyone is walking about with? Paranoid, plus one vision range, minus one to movement point. Might very rarely engage in a mild feud if there's another clan on the same tile. And then all thumbs. Training time doubled in crafting. Experience gained in crafting halved. So definitely don't want to let you be a crafter. Likely, likely to get upset within a year if forced into a profession in the crafting discipline. Well, that's awkward. And finally, hopefully this guy's not terrible. We have Almon. On our travels, we heard tales of your great leadership. We can already see there's truth to them. He's obsessive and charismatic. Training time halved if at least three turns. Uh, okay. Obsessed with every desire. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Become obsessed with the idea of... Well, that, that didn't help me. Sorry. And desire. What is a desire exactly? I, I, I say I don't have an easy way of explaining it, but they do. Clans can develop a desire based on their traits. For example, a clan with the easy, easily cold trait will likely become unhappy if trained as an explorer and sent off during the winter. The longer a clan has a desire, has a desired which hasn't been fulfilled. Okay, the more their mood can drop. Ignoring a clan's desire can be done, but this is generally not advised. Satisfying a clan's desire will result in it receiving a permanent mood bo boost or bonus. Cool. Feuds are a special type of desire where two clans decide they hate each other and want you to punish the other. Once a feud has begun, you will likely need to intervene. Most clans will never develop a desire, so this isn't something you'll need to spend too much time or energy dealing with. Pay attention to your clan's traits, though, as some especially troublesome clans are usually pretty easy to spot. Yeah. All right, charismatic. Morale for all other clans on the same tile increased by one quarter. Training time for social professions are halved. Experience are doubled for the social professions. No other clans on the tile may commit crimes. Okay, interesting. Never engages in feuds with other clans. Well, I feel like we don't have a very good grouping of people. All right, so we're going to go here. We have to choose which one of these three that we want to train in a profession. Admittedly, it's... Ooh. Was that you? You? It just disappeared, whatever it was. Okay, so she's afraid of water. And correct me if I'm wrong, but we're like right on a stream. That sucks. All right. Uh... Okay, what is it that you... So here's another thing that I haven't quite figured out yet. So we had the clans. We had all the stuff, all the information. Oh, it's down here. Okay. Well, I figured it out right there, guys and gals. I couldn't remember, like, I, I wasn't able to figure out where, like, this information was. And I was looking all over the place, but it's right here. All right, so your movement is bad, so you're not necessarily going to be great when it comes to exploration. But your vision's increased, so maybe it's still fine? 
I feel like it's not. Oh, dear. All right, I'm going to make you an explorer. I'm going to regret it. It's happening, though. It is happening. All right, so that's done, and now we must study a profession. Or, sorry, that's... Well, I, it's, I guess it is study a profession. I'm sorry. See, I was under the impression that this was just, like, research stuff. And it wasn't necessarily just based off of professions, but apparently I'm wrong. So there we go. Okay, can I show all? How does this work? There we go. That's what I wanted. All right, the knowledge screen. Oh, the more knowledge you produce, the faster you can learn new professions to train your clans in and upgrades to make them even more powerful. You start the game producing four knowledge per turn, but this number can be increased by training and professions. Yeah, just like the other one. All right, so they recommended that we learn agriculture to start with. So I'm going to go down that road, and I'm going to say OK. And if we take a look up here, it's one turn to learn agriculture, two turns to get the Explorer built ready to go. I'm OK with that. And we've pretty much done all that we had to do on our first turn. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to end it. And time's going to tick away, and the next turn is going to be here. It is now late April, 480. And we got another clan that has joined. You may switch a clan's discipline to agriculture at this point. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Ooh, there's rumors of what? I thought something said there were rumors of something. Sorry, I was glancing away over at the right-hand side. Okay. So a new clan has joined. We get to see what's going on. Wait. What was that? You saw it, right? Independent and squeamish. Lovely. Experience gained in all disciplines has been tripled. Training time for settled professions increased by half. And training time for social professions doubled. Never has desires. And squeamish. Morale halved. Training time doubled in livestock. Experience gained in livestock is halved. Never engages in feuds with other clans. I think... I think we're going to go switch some disciplines going here. I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to put your discipline as agriculture train clan what's happening right now oh i can train any of these guys in agriculture but it didn't keep hold on okay there it goes what is this now click uh this button to train sorry to train aren't in agriculture from level two to four i can't do that yet so does that mean we have to get him up to the next level? So he'll either be a reaper or a gatherer. Okay. I'm kind of getting that, the idea of all this stuff. A study profession. Okay, so we have harvesters, we have bread makers, we have wine makers, beekeepers, and farmers. I think I'm going to go with the harvesters. Right now we have reapers and gatherers. Are the two different profession, professions that are already learned. Okay, so before I, I do all that, I want to go back to my clans here. And I can't do anything with you. What is this two up here? Oh, his discipline is level... Agriculture level two. Oh, really? Did he start that? Maybe he started that way. Let, let's try a different one. Let's just see. Can only train one clan at a time. All right, that's fair. All right, I guess we'll finish our turn, and then we will uh, see what's next on the old help menu. Get some more information here, since we've gone through a couple of turns, and we have our first explorer out. And we have yet another one who has joined us. They are independent and miserable. Well, that's that's not great. That's not great at all. All right. Uh, interface and basic game controls. Why don't we have a basic economics? I'm pretty sure we know the controls for now, so I'm, I'm going to skip that one for right now one of your most important jobs is preventing your tribe from starving which looks like we are going to be starving soon unless i do something you start with some food in your stockpile but not enough to survive the winter so make sure you start collecting more within a few months with the, like with a forager like a gatherer or hunter okay other important early game resources include knowledge which is what allows you to research new professions and fame which allows you to acquire new clans faster you can also use treasure to buy resources or sell ones that you 
have too much of when the caravan is visiting. Cloth is necessary to expand your tribe's pop cap so that it can continue growing and adding new clans. And then we can continue with basic economics. Hello? I feel like this somehow got broken. Because this was not giving me issues before. So I don't know what's going on. But that's okay. You have one settlement which can train one clan in a profession at a time. So try to plan ahead as much as possible. Training clans as foragers is important early on as you want to start harvesting resources from the map as soon as possible. Later in the game you'll be able to produce resources much more efficiently by having clans construct structures instead. Researching new professions and their upgrades is important to keeping your economy and military on track. Your best bet is to prioritize getting a basic resource, refinement pipeline set up, uh, that is harvesting iron and then turning it into weapons with your initial research choices, as this will give you something to sell to the caravan in exchange for whatever else you might lack. Makes sense. Right, what if I want to learn more about clans? See, they're just, it's not bringing up whatever's next. So I feel like once the game fully released, they broke the, uh, they may have accidentally or inadvertently broke the progression system of their, their little tutorial thing there. Okay, so we have a new clan that joined. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. We'll refuse to attack enemy armies. Not good. Mood is never better than upset. Lovely. Morale is reduced by three quarters. No experience gained in any discipline. Yeah, you're pretty terrible. I don't like you. Unfortunately, it seems we can't stay on our own if we want to keep our heads. Even so, it would be best if you let us do our own thing. Deal? Gained in all discipline is tripled, even though you can't gain any experience in any discipline. But, you know, that. Training time for settled... Yeah, okay. So you're kind of a, just the worst thing in existence at this point. Um, I'm not sure... Like, moving here, what does that do for us? It's an unidentified plant. Seeing this on a tile means that there's a useful plant there, but you don't know what kind. Once unidentified by a gatherer, reaper, or surveyor, you'll be able to harvest the resources from it. Ah, okay. Well, there we go. Alright, well, there's something over here, and we're going to head that way. You can put notes on the map if you wanted to. So that is a thing. The settlement is idle. We need to train another person to do a thing. So I guess we're going to make you a gatherer? Seems fairly legit. Okay, we're going to end our turn again. And we're getting pretty close to where I would normally break off the episode. I'm going to try to go through a few more turns before we break it all off. But we're getting close. What are these? It's a deserted village. What happens if I move there? Can I not walk there? I find this strange. Why can't I why can't I go to the deserted village? I'm assuming there's something that I need to do to get that to work. Alright. We finish this turn, we're gonna get our first harvester, I guess. Foraging allows you to harvest a tile's resources without constructing a structure, which is not just useful but essential in the early game. Convenience always comes at a price, though, and the per turn production of a forager will always be lower than that of a structure occupying the same niche. The clan will, the, this clan will spend turns it has enough supply foraging, and automatically encamp on those it doesn't. You can override this behavior by using one of the hotkeys below. The tile must contain a visible source of fruit, honey, olives, or grapes. I guess that's fruit? It's a patch of berries. It seems like it could be fruit. So we're going to go there. Looks like we found some cattle, and we found the water. So we, uh, we seem to be maybe on an island? I'm not sure. You can now train clans as harvesters. Cool. I thought so. I thought that, I thought that was a, a cool thing. My fame has convinced clan uh, Sigfried, or Sigifred, to leave the wilderness and join. They are corrupt and petty. Sure they are. Why wouldn't they be? 
Uh, likely to engage in a mild feud within a few years if there's another clan on the same tile. Let's see. Corrupt. Resource production reduced by one quarter. And resource production from construction constructed structures reduced by one quarter. Might commit theft crime every few years. Well, we're here to get our fair share. You understand, right? Well, we'll see. I, I, I did, but, you know... Not great. Okay, so you're a dude who's doing a thing. I should probably figure out what I'm going to do with you, huh? Mm, you're not good with livestock. Everything else seems to be fine. Uh, I guess I can make you a hunter. That's not necessarily great. Yeah, let's just do that. I'll make you a hunter. Maybe you can go over here and start hunting. Who knows? And let's study another profession. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I, and it's probably a mistake, I realize this, I'm going to go with honor. So I would go back to show more until, oh, we can't get all the way out. All right, that's fine. We'll go here and honor. Okay, we'll finish up our turn, and I think that's probably going to do it for this first episode, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed. The caravan has arrived, and we'll get to see what that's all about in the... May switch a clan's discipline to honor. Uh, we'll see about what the caravans got going for it in the very next episode. I know there's a lot of reading, a lot of information getting thrown at you, and the gameplay is real slow right now at the start because, again, I'm learning right alongside you. I, I know some of this stuff already, but I want to make sure that the information is there so if you want to play the game, you can maybe skip this stuff and just hop in and start playing and having fun and enjoying it. But it's always there in case you, you know, you missed something, I missed something, I didn't explain it well enough, or whatever the case is. It's all still there and available for you guys. Anyway, the game, once again, is called John Schaefer's At the Gates. It released today, January 23rd, 2019. And, yeah, I'll have all the information down below, where to get the game information on developer and all that stuff, and various links and things of that nature. Again, in the description of the video. If you guys enjoyed the video, you liked it, and all that stuff, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this. And tons of other things. You know I have a whole bunch of stuff going on at any one time. And until the very next episode, folks, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you guys so much for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later.